Hey all, I have promised to make a video of this folding box that I have in my photo studio that folds up to four, less than four inches thick when it's leaning against the wall and because of the weight distribution of the wood, it's totally stable there. It's not going to fall over. Um, I keep it behind my paper rolls. It is made of two sheets of three quarter inch cedar ply that I got from Lowe's. They're about 40 bucks, I guess. 40, maybe a little bit more. Um, hinges and a little bit of ingenuity. So let's look at the basic design. Take some measurements along the way. Uh, this side is attached to a 36 inch piece of two by four. Uh, which is screwed into the back of the cedar. These hinges are screwed directly into the cedar with 12 gauge, if gauge is the right term for screws, so that there are no visible screws from the outside of the box. One edge of the box goes right up flush. Uh, it goes right up flush to the edge of the box so that there's a nice flush side. The other does not. The other is indented about uh, four inches, three and a half inches. Um, the reason for that is to do flush with both sides of the boxes would have meant much more perfection in terms of cutting and positioning. This way was super easy. I put the flush side on first, got it looking really good, uh, then put on the, the ends of the box, then just shunted the other side up to where it needed to be. So the reason why this has a lot of strength when it's, when it's actually closed, open, open, closed, when it's a box, is because basically I've created a three quarter inch pocket there out of a two and a quarter inch piece of wood, three quarters thick, and from this offcut, one and a half inch. So that is a three and a three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch pocket, into which that piece, which is three quarter inch and then just shy of three quarter inch, I shaved it a little bit so it wasn't too tight. It's hard to do with one hand, but that is the secret to success of this box, is that strength. So I'm kicking the side, um, and that's not going anywhere, so that's just really, that's where the strength is. Uh, what else do I need to tell you while it's open? Nothing. Nothing. Let's set this up. So when it comes to using it, that's pretty much it. And it is rock solid. Rock solid. So let's look at some dimensions and some more details. Uh, let me see. So we've got that flush edge. We've got indented sides, about four inches. Um, I was gonna do flush ends, but the amount of engineering it would have taken would have been much more because this pocket idea could not have happened um, to have flush edges. So the main thing is this is positioned, this is positioned far enough to this end so that when it folds up, it doesn't hit those 36 inch two by fours that would be in their way. And then we have that side, which is not flush. In terms of wood, let's see. Sorry about the jerky jerky mobile movement. This is cut to 80 inches because that's just about as high as I can do and still leverage it, leverage it down in this height of room. It's 80 inches, 
but it's the full four foot width, 48 inches. Um, 80 inches is a good length because that's the same size as uh, many bed sizes, many bed sizes like queen and double, so this can take bedding. Now here's the cut sheet. So I had, I don't know how visible that is, two of these sheets. Um, I got the both cut. Awesome. Let's use something darker anyway. Hang on just a sec. So, two sheets of eight foot by four foot, foot, cut 16 inches off the top of both. Then, which left, that's my top. Then this, I cut a 20 inch and a 20 inch, which are my sides. Sides. That's one end, that's one end, and then I cut these to 43, I think. And I was left with whatever order we were in, I don't know if I remember, but there was an 8-inch off-cut there. So that is the cut list. Um, I had Lowe's do it because cutting this stuff accurately is a pain in the neck and they've got that big sliding thing. So it really was that straightforward. So I'm going to go to the computer now and go through some photos that I took during construction and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go through some photos that I took while making this uh, and help me remember what order I did things in and to give you some tips on how to do it the easy way. So the very first thing I started doing was I went out of my workshop where my workstation is a perfect flat edge um, and mounted the hinges to the 2x4, that's 36 inch 2x4, and then set the, uh, set the wood on its end so that when I drilled these um, screws into this this was like underneath this was flush because they were both in a super super uh, straight edge and that's really important to get the seamless edge uh, on the box so that ended up uh, it's looking at the same thing again and probably in the wrong order so first put the hinges on the 2x4 flush then put them on the box, then screw the 2x4 um, onto the top from below. Um, this was all pretty easy to just eyeball. Um, I was standing probably looking down on this, making sure that this edge was flush with this edge, putting in a couple of test screws, making sure it's good, and then just adding a bunch more screws. And there are a lot of screws there because there's only about a half inch bind um, so that the screws don't go all the way through the sheet. Um, then I took my end, which is 40 inches by 20 inches, lined it up so that when it hinged, I knew it would not, it would be, it's far enough that away that it wasn't going to hit this when it was hinged down. Then drew a line across um, and just went for it. I th I'm really sure I put the hinge on the end first and then stood the whole thing up and screwed in the last three screws into the base. Um, now for this one, I don't, I hadn't, at this stage I hadn't, hadn't even worked out how I was going to lock them. I had a different plan of kind of a lever that locked them. So you'll see the, that the little edges are not there yet. That's coming. And then I thought, aha! So I screwed, I st the order I did all of these in is I screwed that onto the end, then I lifted it up, attached, put that where it was going to be, and then screwed through into the base. So then I ended up with that, two sides of the box. Um, went to the other, 
just didn't eyeball, got it lined up. And uh, notice now here, before I even attached this, I had these ends on already because I could. Um, same thing, attached the hinges to the end, then sat it up on its end, measured it up, put it against the line, screwed it into the base, and then made sure it was all square and screwed this into the side. And that's three sides. And then the fourth was fairly straightforward because I had my two upright ends um, and I could just lean this edge against the two ends which gave me my positioning for everything else. Um, doesn't even look like I have hinges on there yet. I wonder what order I did that in. I don't remember, but that's not so critical. What is critical is have these box ends up at both ends, so you're just pushing this in and finding the right position to screw this two by four down into the wood. And that's really why I have an I have an indentation here. It could have been less. It could have been one inch or two inches, um, because these originally were 48 inches wide before I cut them down to 43. Um, but as long as you're not trying to create a box that's flush on both sides, then it's pretty. It's not so critical. Um, I guess if you wanted it flush on both sides, then these would have to be cut at 48 minus one and a half, so 46 and a half. But yeah, the chances of the chances of everything just being perfectly straight and getting two flush edges seems unrealistic. So, so that's kind of it. Uh, oh, that was the original cut. I can't add any of these to the cut list there because it's not really clear at all. So that's what I got. Um, I hope if you decide to make this, you have as much fun with it as I have. Uh, comment. Um, please subscribe. I've made this video based on feedback from a previous video um, that people actually have want this video therefore I made it so don't underestimate the amount that subscribing and liking videos leads to the creation of more videos so that's all I got have a good one bye bye